Hello class, here are some of the things that you're going to find in section 1.1. 1. 1. Um, some of it is they're going to give you large numbers. Let's say they give 1, 2, 8, comma, 3, 9, 0, comma, 4, 76. And what it's going to ask you is what place is some number in? So if it says the 6, that's the 1's place. Tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, hundred millions. You do need to put the S at the end of the word, and you don't need to put like a um, one hundreds or hundred thou the word the number hundred here. You have to actually write the words out. Then let's say that they give you a another large number say 10 billion 300 million 57,000 544 and they want to write you this out in words it's a spurt, certain way that you have to do this you have to put 10 billion Put the comma wherever there was a comma. Three hundred million. Put the comma. Fifty seven thousand. Put the comma. Note that there's a dash between the fifty and the seven. Whenever you have something like, um, 20 something 30 something 40 something 50 something 60 something 70 something 80 something or 90 something you have to put this dash in here and then you put here oops um, 500 44 Note that there's no and between 100 and 40. That's the way um, that you're going to have to put these. Spelling does count on these. So um, if you need to look up the spelling while you're doing it, that's fine. Okay, then you're going to have... Um, so again, I'm going to put... Oops. Say you have the number 43... Write it out as 40 3. Then you're going to have some where you are um, rounding. So let's say that we're rounding the number 345 to the nearest 10. So when we do this, we're going to look at the tens digit and whatever's right past it. If the number that's right past it, is a five or higher then we're going to round this number up and all the rest will be zeros if it's four or less it just becomes a zero so here the number becomes 350 if we had 344 it would go to 340 this zero at the end is very important make sure you have it so now let's say that we have something like Four nine nine nine, and we need to raise it to the nearest ten. Okay, so we're going to look at the tens digit, which is a nine. The one right past it is also a nine, so that means we need to go up. But if we move this one up, it becomes a ten. So that means we carry the one over to here. This also becomes a ten. So we bring the one over to here. And this raises up to be 5,000. If we have 8, 7, 4, 5, 2, and we need to raise to the nearest 1,000, then we're going to look at the 1,000 digit, which is the 7 here. The next one is a 4. That means we don't need to raise, uh, round up. So this just becomes 8, 7, Oops. 
Oh, that's right. 87,000. So we do need all those zeros in there. Next, you're going to have a bunch of questions where is a number, div number divisible by something? So like 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, or 5. For numbers that are divisible by 2, they're the even numbers. So if a number is even, it's divisible by 2. That means if it ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. For 5, if it ends in a 5 or a 0, then it's divisible by 5. For a 3, a way you can tell is by adding up all the digits and if that number is divisible by 3. However, for this class, you don't really need to know all these tricks. You're um, allowed to use a calculator. So on these questions, just divide all the numbers by whatever number it's asking and then you'll be able to tell which ones are divisible. Um, I know some of the homework have nines. Um, there are tests for those, but don't worry about those. Um, I will tell you for six, the way to tell if something is, is divisible by six, if it's divisible by both two and three. Again, though, sometimes that takes a while to do, um, so it's easier just to do it with a calculator. Next, we're gonna do some prime factorizations. So let's say that we have the number 56. And prime factorization means what are all the prime numbers that will divide into it. And a prime number is a number that's only divisible by itself and 1, starting with 2. So examples are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, and 23. These are all prime numbers. So a composite number is any number that is not a prime number. So numbers like 4, 6, 8, 10, even 9, because 3 goes into 9. So let's go back to our original question of prime factorization of 56. The easiest way to do this is start with the lowest prime number, which is a 2. And does 2 go into the number? 2 will go into 56, and it will go 28 times. So we're going to keep the 2. Now, will 2 go into 28? Yes, it will. And it will go 14 times. So we're going to keep that 2. Will 2 go into 14? Yes, it will. And it will go 7 times. 7 is also a prime number. So that is going to be part of the answer. So what you're going to need to put for the answer here, you see that we have 1, 2, 3 2's and a 7. So we're going to say 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. And that will be the answer. So let's say that we have the number 81. 2 will not go into 81. So we're going to look at the next prime number, which is a 3. And 3 will go in to 81. 27 times. 2 won't go into 27, but 3 will. And it will go 9 times. 2 won't go into 9, but 3 will. And it will go 3 times. So here we have 4 3's. So the answer is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So that's how you're going to do prime factorizations. Every number in your answer should be a prime number. So for this one, if you had put 3 times 27, even though those are factors, it's not the prime factorization. Also, if you had put 9 times 9, that also wouldn't do it. So that's why I recommend just starting with a 2. If that doesn't work, then go with, with a 3. If that doesn't work, then go with a 5. If that doesn't work, go with a 7. If that doesn't work, go with an 11. That's as far, I think, as any of the questions that you get will be. Okay? Then the next type of question is going to be something like a least common multiple of two numbers. Let's say it is 12 and 15. There's a bunch of ways to do this. One is using prime factorization and then seeing what numbers go with each other. Another way is to look at whatever the biggest number is, 
see if the first number goes into it. And so that's 1 times 15. So I'm going to say 1 times 15. And 12 will not go into 15, so that's a no. Then we're going to say 2 times 15, which equals a 30. 12 will not go into 30, so no. And then 3 times 15 is 45. Again, 12 won't go into 45, so that's no. And then 4 times 15 equals 60. 12 will go into 60, so 60 is the least common multiple. Here what you're doing is saying the smallest number that both numbers will divide into. This is one method to do it. Um, the other method is doing the prime factorization. So I'll start with the 12. 2 will go into that 6 times. 2 will go into 6 3 times. And then for 15, 3 and 5. So now what you're going to look at is all of the prime factors that you have. We see that we have 3 one time in both of them. So we're going to use that one time. We see that we have 5 one time total. So we're going to use that. And you see that we have 2 two times in one of the numbers. So we're going to say use both of those 2's. Now if we do this, we're going to have 2 times 2 which is 4 times 5 which is 20 times 3 which is 60 oops 60 and that's the answer so you can do it this way what you're looking at is the unique um, fa prime factors multiplied by however many times they're here so here you see that we have two two times but they're both with the 12 that's why we use it twice and you see that we have a 3 for the 12 and a 3 for the 15 but it's only one time in each of those numbers, and that's why you only use it once. So hopefully this will help you with section one. Um, come back for section two.